Despite a turbulent Premier League season, was this our best season ever? This is West Ham Fan TV's end of season review. It's been a long, hard season. We've been across Europe, we've been across the country, and now we're sitting here in Stratford. Uh, Premier League fixtures are out for next season, so we know where we can. But we're going to review uh, last season. Now, boys, is it our best season ever? That, I mean, we should start with that because... At best the end of the day, season ever? Not ever, but in the Premier League okay. era. Um, because at the end of the day, we're sitting here and we're a champion of Europe. And that's factory. <clears throat> With yeah, I would say it's, it's a successful league-wise, it ain't. But if you're talking about, you play for trophies. And it's the first time I've won a trophy during the Premier League era. First time in 43 years. So, yeah, it's a, it's a of course, it's, it's a massive successful season. Um, I would say I've enjoyed every moment of it. I'm lying. I, I ain't. It's been terrible. But the European campaign has been yeah, the best I've seen. Ending it with a trophy. That's that's. That's the big point for us. And that's what it all hinged on. You know, we were saying during the season, like, if we don't win that trophy, it's been a horrendous season. It has, like, the actual, the ride, the experience through the season has been horrible for me. That's so bad. We're running about relegation. We couldn't really, I'm speaking for myself, I couldn't really enjoy the uh, Europa League, Conference League campaign until we got to, like, the quarter semis when it got closer. When we was in those early stages groups, it was just was losing. It just, it was a, it was a hard slog. Was I always, nice I always thought the Europa League was a good distraction when we wasn't winning the Premier League because we knew we'd get results against the teams we were playing, and it also give players like Skamaka a good run out. You know, he got himself a few goals, uh, and you breed off confidence of getting wins. And that, look, it wasn't great, but the last, I say, the last ten games of the Premier League season, we did turn the corner. And we did improve, and I think that's why we did win the cup. Well, we, we, we did start, let, let's go all the way back to August last year. We started off, I thought, very unlucky in the first game, to be honest with you. And what, 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 do you think that would have, was a sliding doors moment? We would have won that game comfortably, which we could have. We could have beat Forest 4 5 1 that day when they beat us 1 0 on the opening day. Do you remember it, Scott? Are you not? City was opening Sorry, uh, sorry okay. <laughs> the second, the second <laughs> day. Okay. We basically wrote that Man City game yeah, off yeah, anyway. Yeah. That was like the game, the that. first winnable game. Um, <clears throat> the sliding doors moment. We win that game comfortably. Do we have a different season? I don't think so. I, I do. No, because you look at the problems that we had, right? And, and, and it's been well documented. It was the style of play that we could not adapt to, that we could not fit to. So even if we find a way to get that Forest game over the line, we still have the same problems trying to play that position. I, I think you football. look at that Forest game and if it goes, we missed the penalty, obviously crossbar, but, and then you look at the Chelsea game when we was robbed at Stamford Bridge. Yeah. You know, they, them, they go your way, it could go different. And, and I think I think with the, the fact that we win that game against Forest, like we should have done, the confidence of the team would be totally different because you've gone into the start of the season, you've just you've rolled over for Manchester City, and we did roll over. And I think if a sliding doors moment of our season was rolling over for Manchester City for me. We the first game. First game, yeah. We, we didn't compete at all in that game. The, the Forest game. Let's we, be honest, Scott. Though, how many teams have competed no, against but, City this season? We've seen we saw first it the game before where we did compete with them. You know, end of the end of the end of the season before, we drew two all year, competing with them. We rolled over and had our bellies tickled and got away. Luckily, only losing two 0 Then we go to Forest, we batter Forest, can't score. But to be fair, and, I'm going to be a little bit. I'm going to be fair here. Like that first game, we went into a, a Premier League season with a few new signings, and Aguirre was very much part of that that um, plan, and he got injured three seasons. But, yeah. but you can't use that excuse for the, the way that we set up against Forest, uh, mm. Man City, the yeah. way that we backed off Man City. We didn't approach the game the same attitude and and drive that we approached it towards the end of last year. Yeah, that, that's why I think confidence is a factor, but I think we put too much stock in confidence because there are elements that besides confidence, like again, like who you got fit, what's the tactics, are new, new players come into a new country, um, again, but trying to adapt to a new style of play. No, but I'm saying like, we're saying that, oh, if we would have beat Forest, then, you know, it would have been different. We could have kicked on and we would have been better in the but games I, proceeding. I, we would have just had the same problems we've had. You, I went to the Forest game and he was with, Ryan was with me and I thought we was very impressive in that game yeah. in terms of like, we, we approached that game like we approached every game last season. And then all of a sudden, the goals, was they just didn't go in that day. It well, was you just think Ben Rama had one ruled out, didn't he, for yeah. VAR? That was another one where Antonio and the defender just come together and, and yeah. that was overruled. It was ridiculous. We had, you, 
it was shown the other week, wasn't it, how many points we've lost due to VAR decisions, yeah. dodgy ones as well. The handballs we've had this season that have gone against us. You look at the Man United game, when, when he's, he's blatantly handballed at the Liverpool game at home. The double yeah. handball from yeah. Thiago, yeah. like, yeah. things like that. We, just... we had a couple go away, the Fulham mm. at home, Bournemouth at home. Suchek's um, handball, Suchek I think. Chelsea. Yeah, Suchek, Chelsea. Chelsea. Oh, that, 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 that evened out, the, the, like Ryan was saying earlier, the terrible goal that we got disallowed at, at Chelsea, the last minute equaliser. You know, this this is the thing. People were saying, oh, well, you know, when we didn't get an handball given and, oh, well, yeah, you didn't have one get, given against her, but they do even themselves out, but it shouldn't be like that. Yeah. It shouldn't be even themselves out. Yeah, I, I, that, that's, that's the biggest problem for us. And VAR has once again cost us quite a few points. The season. title. Mm. No, it's not. It's <laughs> not. It's, you know, it's, it's turned, league-wise, it's turned a very, very bad mm. league season. It could have been... A mediocre yeah. season. But we've, we've, yeah. we've, we've had some poor performances, though. Let's not sweep them on. Everton away was horrendous. Brighton away Still. was the worst performance. Brighton. Yeah. That, that's you know the worst I mean? performance like, I've yeah. seen for a long time. That was yeah, just, that day. That's the day where I thought to myself, you know, we, we could actually go down because we had no fight in us that day. But then something turned. Something just switched it with this team. And like we even, even when we lost here against Newcastle, what was it 5 1? We played, we didn't even play that bad. No. Just Newcastle just put everything away that day. Five mistakes, wasn't it, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What was that one where fucking Fabianski come running yeah. out? Oh. <laughs> That's it. it was, oh, it was bless one of, him. It was one of days where everyone had an off day, but we didn't play that bad. And five mistakes cost us yeah. five mistakes. Yeah, as individual errors. Yeah. yeah. But I remember, but I, I do go back to that Forest game, and I look at that Forest game, I say, if we tuck every chance away that we have, we've beaten 5-1, away from home. I think they have a completely different season. Uh, I don't, I don't a few weeks place. later... Confidence just seeps through. Yeah, but again, a few weeks confidence. later, we went to Villa and got a, a result. It was a, the worst 1-0 game I've ever seen. But even then, you think you're going to turn a corner. But that's the thing this season. We, never we just couldn't just we couldn't just get a run going. Where the season before, the previous seasons, we'd go three, four, five, six yeah. games without losing yeah. and picking up wins. I think, I think there's a few games that you can say this season that we, we picked up important points right time. Yeah, we, we haven't been shit this season, by the way, because of lack of... That's not, we can't just put it down like... Of course like, not lack of There's so many yeah, reasons. No, there's, there's reasons. There's players not settling in, there's players not clicking, there's tactics. Yeah, so confidence like, yeah. doesn't just fucking no, it, undo it just, all of that. It, just, it helps, man. Yeah. It helps, but it's not going to... Like, to say we'll have a completely different season I is think to the, say... I think the big turning point for our season was Arsenal at home. When yeah. we were 2-0 down, that was you huge. think that was going to yeah. be 4 5 nil. they miss a penalty, and we end up drawing 2 all. That, that was a turning point for me because then we got a result here against United, which basically kept us up. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. we went on that run and we could we had a bit of confidence going into... That Arsenal game, even though it was a draw, it was the first game where the fans came out yeah. and felt elated. I and think, we, I think everyone beat. got to that point where you got through the bit where you had the Moyes out people and that, and then everyone just got to that point where we thought, right, he's staying, let's just get behind this team. Yeah. Let's yeah. get them through this season and then we'll sort it out in the summer. Let's get them over the line in Europe, which, which we did, you know, and... Uh, yeah. The rest is history. That's it, mate. It is. In, in the history books, like, you're going to remember this season as West Ham when they won the Europa yeah, Conference we, League. They're we won't remember think, all that shit. They finished 14th in the Premier League, six points above the drop. Like, no one's going to remember that. I don't, yeah. don't really care. Uh, most, most of our fans, we, we always go, what did we finish? 15th, 14th? Like, I can't even remember what place we finished because we're so focused on... I don't remember what place we finished just then. Yeah. Ask anyone yeah. now, would you have taken finishing 8th and not winning that Conference League? No one would take no, it. No, 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 no one would not. take it. And that's, and that's the thing. And this is what we said. We said this ages ago. And we said this through the season. We take 17th finishing the Premier League yeah. and winning the trophy. And we're, back in, and we're back in Europa League. We're in a better competition next season. Whatever people think of the Conference League, it's still a, it's still a trophy. But now we're back in the Europa League, yeah. which, look, you only got to look what Roma done. They yeah. won it last season in the Conference League. They went on, they got to the final this yeah. year and they lost to Seville, who we beat. You know, so we can mix it with these teams. But what we've got to do is just get that transfer window right. Yeah, that's, it. that's, that's the thing coming into it. But it's, it's been a crazy season when you look back at it, how long this season has been. What about the, the signings? That, that, wait, what you know? about the signings that we made? Let's rate them. Key one was when Aguil and Zuma got fit and they played together. We stopped leaking a lot of goals when they played together. And Aguil is a, is a quality defender. Zuma's brilliant as well. Paqueta, it took a long time for him to get, get going, but... Mm. We see it from early days that he was on a level that our players weren't. And once yeah, them players yeah. got to his level, that's why the last 10 games, you look back well, at that... Well, Moyes changed his position yeah, as well, Yeah, you look back he? at that conference league for Paqueta, just, he thought 20 minutes ago, I'm going to dictate this game. Yeah. And he just yeah. wanted yeah. the ball. And look, he, he, played, he put the 
ball in for Moyes both. brought him in as a as a Dimitri Payet number ten creator playmaker, right? That's what he brought him in as, at, which he wasn't really. And then by the time we get to New Year, he goes right, okay, oh, let me try him next to Rice. Plays him next to Rice, it's a different game. And, and, and uh, players like games. him need to see what's in front of them. They can't be playing yeah. with their back to it. No. They've got to get on the ball and look up because when when players like him get on the ball, they just bang, spraying balls, like, put the through balls through. That's how they play. But that, but that, that goes back to the players, giving them time, him to a time to adapt to the Premier League, giving the players time mm. to adapt to him. Yeah, and, and that's like you said, that's what you did. At the start of the season, they had that full length of time training together, learning out, you know. There's certain runs that, if you're sitting there, and there's no disrespect to Suchek, but you see Suchek, the, the run Bowie made for the final, right? If that's Suchek picking up that ball in that position, it doesn't get played through to Bowie. No. So, Bowie won't, so he doesn't make that run. You know, he makes a different type of one. He looks to go wide. Do you get what I mean? He's not, you know, but when you like, start seeing players like, like him who've got, they, they get the ball, Bowie knows he can make that run because he's going to mm. look to play. We saw it, we did see flashes of it in the Conference League with Skamaka. You know, you go back to one of the goals Skamaka got over here where Paqueta literally lifted the ball over the top and Skamaka knew. The mm. defenders walked towards um, Pakta. Skamaka's gone beyond. He's just tipped it over the top. Bang. So yeah, but the thing is, when, on the way <clears throat> when you've got players, a bit like when we had Dimitri Payet, when, when, that's all you're right, fine, mate, right. mate. When, um, when players like him get on the ball, the first thing the other players do, especially the strikers, they're on their toes, they're going, they know that ball's coming through. And like you said, just like what Boeing did in the final, he knew that that ball was going to get played. As soon as Paqueta took that little roll over, he knew that ball was going through and he timed it perfectly. Skamaka's, he hasn't really had a season, has he? He's hard to judge. He's what I've seen of him, I, I like him. I thought he suited Europe perfect. Yep. And it's a shame that he wasn't involved in the, uh, in the final, in the semis. Because... I think we can change the way we played a bit in Europe until that last yeah. game. We was able to, to flex our muscles a bit more and have, have more players around him. And he was able to link up and play off others. Whereas just that typical Antonio role, yeah. He would not fit that typical counter attack. The difference is up, with Europe think. and the Premier League is that we we get more possession of the ball in Europe because we're yeah. a better team. Like in the Premier League, it's it's rare that we we get a team and and we have more possession. I've seen us win games and we've only had like thirty percent possession. Yeah. But obviously, Corne is another one who's riddled with injuries this season. He got a mysterious injury, but we'd sort of heard that a lot of people would say, "Oh, he, he was he was key. He was key to what Moyes wants to do." Right. And when we did see him fit, and when he had played, it, it, and I'm not writing him off because as pre-season, all of that, it just, it just didn't quite click. You know what I mean? He's always it's offside. Been a tough, tough season, bro. Really. Yeah, tough season. Yeah. Because I do, I, I believe, when you look back at the season, I believe that a lot of it was hinged on him. And it was going to be him going to be the one to come in and, and take a start in place, you know? Really, you think it all hinged on Corne? Yeah, I do. I, I, I think that's the way that Moyes wanted to play because he wants to play that attacking. Yeah, I think he that, was sort that of like attacking football. But, but he didn't want to play the K. He wanted to play possession-based football, I, and then we switched. I, I, to I think he wanted Corne to be like an Antonio type yes, player. Yes, that's yeah. you see that you see that sometimes when you bring him on as a sub to play up front, and and going by what he was saying the other day, I think that's what he wants to do next season. Yeah. The thing, the thing is, Corne, Corne suited Skamaka, you know, because he was direct. He'd pick up the ball, he'd run at players, and he'd look to get the ball in the box, you know, and, and that's what Skamaka needed. When, when, you know, when you look back, like you said, you, know, you had a great bad injury, Skamaka's had a bad injury. They all had injury. The, the, uh, they all had Corne, a bad injury. The only one got a little really, injury. Paquette had a little injury. The only one that didn't was Emerson. The thing, yeah. the thing is, like, with... Emerson with, came really well. Yeah, the thing is, with, like, well. Corne, what is, you think he's coming from being a first-team player at Burnley, He's not going to be a first team player at West Ham. He's got to work his way in. And when he was picking up injuries, he was just like not getting any any run in the team. And it was difficult for him. But I thought like, especially with a Chelsea game, when yeah. he, he uh, come on and he scored the equaliser that was ruled out, I thought he was brilliant that day. And, and again, these are, these are like what you're saying, sliding door moments in the season. That could have been his moment. You know, that mm. goal gets given, again, the boost of the confidence, you know, and, and going into... He would have still been injured. Oh yeah, it would have happened, but it still might have... He may have played the next couple of games. So I'm sure he was available after that, but and then picked up the injury. But yeah. it, it's just a shame that it worked out. But then with the injury to the quid, it's probably why we ended up getting Kerr. Yeah. And Kerr, like you know, fair play because he had a rough start. He made a lot of mistakes, gave away penalties. Mistakes led to goals. He had a lot of heat on him. Changed from centre back to right back, back five, back four. 
all over the place and be, he's yeah. settled. He come, he come I'll be good. honest with Kerr, he really surprised me how, how good he was towards the end of the season. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really taking to him at the beginning. I was thinking to myself, PSG don't let many players go and if they've let him go for 12 million, their yeah. fans are happy he's gone. And the way he started, I'm thinking, no wonder they, but well, I he, thought he settled in really well towards the end of the season. He, he was a player that in the first game when I watched him play, he was a player that I thought to myself, he's got all the tools there. Yeah. He's got all the tools. You know, he, he looks like, and plays like Rio Ferdinand, bringing it out from the back. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. you know, athletic and he's quick and all that. And then all of a sudden, these mistakes, and like, I was speaking to a friend of mine who supports BSG, and he said, look, he's a good player, but he makes so many mistakes. So many mistakes. He says, if you can get the mistakes out of him, he'll be a good player. But, and then obviously, like, after the first game, I thought, you know, apart from that rash challenge that yeah. he put in in the first game, give away the penalty, I think, didn't he? Yeah, yeah uh, which I don't think was totally his fault, to be honest. No, no, he it, made the decision yeah, like, reactive. It was out of position and all that. And you think, you know, he's got all the tools there and I liked him. Then all of a sudden, the mistakes like Britain, and I think, what the fuck have we signed here? You know, but it's it's one of them things mm. where, you know, we've, like, as, Let's call ourselves flash pundits. Yeah. yeah. Reactive pundits. Yeah. Like we stand outside there after a game, fucking emotions all over the place, and, and you, you, you talk about players and you talk about their performances. Like sometimes we can be a bit harsh. And, you know, I've seen Dom out there this season saying Quetta's never going to amount to nothing. And at the end of the day, mate, that geezer was fucking classy. He's exactly. another Felipe Anderson. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like we're too harsh to judge them, you know? But there were. There's just seemed to me that this is a reason why I thought we was going to go down this year. And I was at a time I was convinced we was going to go down because there was no plan. And that, and that, and that was the thing. And like you said, the plan, you know, losing the ground as early as we did, the plans had to change. And then it's fact certain things would work out. You know, and, that, and that's what it is. You know, you look at Flynn Downs, Flynn Downs was another summer signing. You know, Quite a disappointing season, season for what we thought he was going to be, and it, well, you know. not really because I didn't expect him getting a lot of games. He was he's, he's been brought in to because Noble had gone. He didn't get that many in Europe though either. To be he fair, in the group games and played he didn't, he, yeah, games. I know, but he was, he was man in a match in most of the group. He games. didn't play. He didn't play in every game. He'd play in one game. One one European game, then he'd be not in the next one. Then he'd or maybe he'd come on in the last two but minutes or the something. Ones, the ones he played, he, he, we, he was awesome. He did, but and the problem was he didn't get consistent yeah, time. Yeah, that was exactly. my problem. But let's be honest. Up, Carabao up, Cup, FA Cup. Yeah, but up with Declan and Rice and and Pakita, you're not going to get. Consistent you time. told me he was his Rice's replacement. That's, he, a, that's what he. That's, he's, no, he's, no, no. Right, no Rice wasn't he's, gone. He's was still here. Right. Finn Downs has been, I said to you, Finn Downs has been brought in to play the holding midfield. Bro. You said he was you the know, rice was, replacement. I'll, 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 I'll tell you what, it was Noble's replacement. He's Noble's replacement in the squad, but he's there to play the holding role when we lose. That, that was the plan to bring him in. We only bought him because he was going to... Yeah, but to say, that, to say that he's rice, that means that like once rice, once rice goes, he's the starter. He's the first choice. He's going to play where rice plays, and he is... You that can, first choice guy for in that position. He's a position. player to Rice. He's a holding midfielder. He will yeah. sit in front of that back line. And he's not a replacement line. then, is he? But he, he is because Rice is going. Yeah, but we're going to get other players in yeah, but to replace Rice. Is, is Flynn Downs is a good holding midfielder to replace that aspect of Rice's game. Then who replaces the other aspects that's of his game? That's what you've got to work out. As I've said, you need yeah. two or three players to replace that. I think that's why Sullivan said he needs two. Exactly. But he, yeah, I mean, look, I, I thought he'd play a bit more games than he did because, you know, we brought him in. He was a promising young player, you know, good pass of the ball. And we had Suchek was, who, who had dropped off, but Moyes, you know, stuck with Suchek, yeah. stuck with Suchek. We didn't get to see much of Downs. And there, and, there, and there was a lot of games where Moyes should have dropped Suchek and given Downs mm. a chance. Yeah, you saw you saw in the city city away. You saw Downs is still a bit raw to the Premier League when he gave away the, the foul for giving away the free kick that led to the goal. You know, like we should have dealt with the, the the ball into the box better, but it was a rash challenge, and that that's sort of a challenge in the Championship. He probably makes and wins the ball. Yeah. yeah. But in the Premier League, it's that much quicker. Yeah. You know, so he, he's another one. He's still got to adapt to the Premier League and not having the game time that some of the others have had. May affect yeah, you got to give him time. Yeah, but think... Emerson has been. We got to talk about Emerson because he was another player that he first come in. He, he didn't look too great in his early games. People weren't sure about him. Thought it was a panic buy. You know, last minute Chelsea, and then slowly, you know, towards the, you know the end of the season, he just kicks on and he takes that position from Creswell for himself and starts week in week out. Put some great performances. My man of the match for the final. 
Um, yeah, I thought he's, I thought he's been excellent. Yeah, I think the only game I could actually say that he was awful was Palace away. Yeah, he which who wasn't? Yeah, who yeah. wasn't awful? And and that 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 was probably his worst game he's had. This but season. even that That's game, way. we still stuck three goals and yeah. we lost four three. But to that was another, just a, to another dodgy VAR. This that season. was just a mental game. That was mm. like there's been some there's been some good good games this season. That like I know it hasn't been great in the Premier League, but there are some games I've sat here and watched and I've, I've I have come out and enjoyed it. Even some like when we've lost. What's been your apart from the final? But in the league, what's been your favourite? I think United at home. I think Man United at home for me because it's relief. It was just it wasn't even that. It was just two teams going at it. I yeah. thought it was a really good game of football. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and obviously Ben Rama got the goal. Uh, what's his name? De Gea obviously should have saved it. But yeah, I think that game we won one nil, and um, yeah, that sort of kept us up. We knew then that we were still going to be in the Premier League. It gave us that. It gave us that opportunity to then concentrate on uh, the semi-finals yeah. and the finals of the Europa Conference. Mine not, was mine was Bournemouth away. Cool. Yeah, that was another good performance. Um, it was an unexpected very, performance. Very, very good form. And we yeah. didn't go in it in great Because didn't form. they just beat Tottenham at yeah, they Tottenham, didn't they? 3-2, didn't they? Six or seven undefeated, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe even nine undefeated under under um, Gary O'Neill. And that was, a, that was the informed team. And you rock up to their place, and we haven't had a great record against Bournemouth at their place. No, like we Bit haven't won there once, in we? Yeah, I think we've only won there once. Quiet, in, uh, scored a free kick. Yeah, in, yeah. in back six, six or seven years ago. So, like, oh, obviously they've been out of the league for a couple of years, but you know, you rock up there and you go to the informal team, and then it's just one of them games where everything seemed to go in. We tore them apart. Yeah, we we did tear yeah, them apart. Yeah, but every time we shot, yeah, you it was a goal yeah. score. Yeah. yeah, it's got to be the it's got to be the Arsenal uh, draw for me, just because. Going into it, it was all just expected Arsenal were going to win. I was doing stuff with their fans and they were talking about, oh, we need to score as many goals as possible to get our goal difference. They, they saw this as an opportunity to not yeah. just win, get their goal difference up. And I went in there, we went 2-0 <clears> down and I was deflated. Yeah, I thought, here we go. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then we came back and we switched it on and we were the better team for the majority of that game. Sure they won the game. Yeah. I honestly thought when we went 2-0 down after about 10 minutes, I thought this was going to be about six or seven. So yeah. did I, yeah. I, I was thought, yeah, fearing it because I was thinking, Arsenal, look, despite what people think, they're a good young team. And um, they was going for the title as well at the time. Um, and they could have demolished us. But they missed play. that penalty. Yeah, and that, it just that's, changed that's it. what I'm saying. You're saying about sliding the door that, that Saka scores that penalty, they could go on and win the league. Yeah. yeah. You yeah, know yeah, what I mean? That's yeah. the difference. But it was, yeah, it was a brilliant game. But yeah, for me, I'm going to go to United 1 0 at home. I thought it was a brilliant game of football. Both teams just going at it. You know, it was a really good game. Scott? No, I, I, I think the United game, I, I, that was one I had to miss because I was in hospital. And, um, That's why I enjoyed it, because he <laughs> was the other one. But now, watching, watching, watching the game, I think that, that so like Nick said, the Bournemouth performance was, was brilliant, but I'll go to the United game. Yeah, yeah. No, it was a good game. It was a good game. Um, what about low points then? How about that? Low points of the season. Oh, jeez. Suck it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah. What's the, what's the, I mean, we've briefly mentioned, but what's the worst you remember? I'll tell you what mine is, right? I'll start it. What is everything? The three before yeah. the break in the week. Here. Leicester Palace Leicester, and Blackburn. Leicester Palace, Blackburn. Yeah. All losses here. And I've, I'll be honest with you, I didn't see how Moyes could survive that no. after the season. We'd, we'd, yeah. Well, we'd that's when I that. sort of changed my mind on David yeah. Moyes because I've always sort of tried to back him. But when that week... I remember standing out here. I can't remember what the last game was. It might be Leicester. Yeah. And I remember standing out here, and I said to myself, "Like, Sank ain't right. Yeah. Something's not right in that yeah. in that dressing room in that team." And you can see it now. And then I thought, "Like, he's got to go." But, but look, I still thought that what what made that better for me, or not as not as low, was that we had the World Cup break to try yeah. and either get rid of Moyes or go back. Even if we kept him, we've got time now. Go back to the drawing, but let's figure out what the problem is. And then come back. I thought that was the perfect time to to have that break and try and fix. It. Obviously, what it didn't work, but that's why for me it weren't as low. And like the Brighton game for me was the less because like you, I thought that's yeah. it. There's no that's coming back from that's Brighton demoralizing. Fucking, yeah. Yeah. No, but they that beat us. Bad, but that, yeah, yeah, it was bad. We we yeah. were sitting there and that was bad. And that was the first time that I that I actually heard the whole of the away end chanting for Moyes out and even cutting the players off saying you're not fit to wear the shirt and all like that that was the first time that I've heard that and I haven't heard that for a long time from our fan base that was yeah that was yeah I really I really felt like you know this this is it I think this could be it because it's so demoralising you know coming back from that that was horrible so let's theoretically right rewind (laughs) 
get back to that Christmas week, yeah? Yeah. Just before the break. You're losing three games. You're the chairman of West Ham. What do you do? Even though, like, you know you know what you know now. So you know that we went on to win the, the league. Do you still get rid of him? No, we win the conference. Yeah, well, you, well, no, you stick with No, you stick with well, If you know, yeah, if, you, if in no, hindsight... You know, all right, you didn't know. Yeah. Then you sack him. Know. I'd say, because I, I wanted to sack him then, so I can't go and then say, well, not knowing what I know now, would you sack him? I would have sacked him because you have the World Cup to get manager in. Other teams were, were getting out of Villa, we've got Emery in. I would have used that time and then they can come in, work with the players and then identify what they need in the January transfer window. So I would have sacked him. You know yeah. what I mean? Don't not worry. knowing what we know yeah. now. The worrying thing at the time... Who, who was out there yeah, that's Emery. the yeah, but no, he, well, he was at Villa. Was he already there? No, but look at but look at look at Brian. They got Deserby. So we was that, this is what I said at the time. Why are we just looking at old oh, Big Sam and the obvious think, names? Yeah, but that's it. The, the thing is, is that you you look at you, you look at it through our other clubs look at it. I'm looking at it. Sullivan and Sullivan's looking at it that Big Sam's the man. Yeah, but if we're looking at it like our Sullivan looks, Sullivan looks at it like, I don't want a sat more. If we're is, looking at it what he yeah, should have the, done, the way what, what we would do it, if we was the owner, not football, Sullivan. Football people are looking at it is that uh, if if they're looking for someone to get us out, you'd employ a David Moyes. Yeah. And we've got that David Well, that was Moyes. the rationale, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's, to be honest, I don't see the fucking... I can't see how that works. You get David Moore. He's the fucking one that puts in the yeah. mess. Yeah, we, but he's we the one that's also yeah. got us out the mess. But, 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 but the thing is, we at that time we was saying and we was all saying this. We're not in a relegation battle yet. It was too early to say by that so November I'm time. Still but, fucking challenging David Moyes. He said we were challenging for Europe. We was. We were only seven points off Europe. That's how mad the, the, the table was. Yeah, but we weren't looking, challenging. Looking, looking back at that situation now, right? And you say you say someone like Emery was available if he hadn't got to Europe. Would you have seriously considered? Yeah. So in a heartbeat, good. in a fucking would, heartbeat. Would, would, would you have actually considered him? Because you look at it when he went to it. When he went to Villa, people sitting wrong. Oh, he ain't, didn't have a good record at Arsenal and all this stuff. Well, that's but stupid. Did you see him in, in, at, at yeah, Sevilla. I'm just, I'm just saying. Yeah, just Villarreal. Saying. Villarreal. Sorry. Yeah. Um, he's got a phenomenal record. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's probably best go to Arsenal. Well, we weren't terrible. Weren't, I mean, Arsenal after, before, and after Emery weren't great. No. But that's what I'm saying. A lot of people, a lot of people wouldn't. Uh, sometimes their first choice. We we need to we need to. I, I'm not going to say we need to fucking a reality check and all that sort of thing. But we need a different direction because these managers, for me, right? And I'm not, you know, David Moyes has won us a trophy. He'll, he'll, he'll forever, and I, I really liked him over the last couple of years. But it's took us to a point now where I don't think he can go any further. Yeah. That's my that's my honest opinion, right? And people might slag me off and all that. Whatever. Yeah. That that is my opinion. We need to look at the club, like because at, at the moment we're going to lose. It looks like we're going to lose Declan Rice, right? We're, we're pretty much resigned to losing him. So this is another rebuild we need. This is another, uh, you know, a, an irreplaceable player that can't be replaced this time. Yeah, we can, there, there is no one that we can go out even with a hundred million pounds and we can ever pick. There's no one that replaces Declan Rice. Declan Rice is a unique player. Yeah, but with that money you can go out and sign two or three players and become a better but team. This is what I'm saying. Well, but he did. He tried to do that in the summer, and he couldn't. He can't work with. We've we got, got another like, video coming got, out about that. Let's yeah, not forget. Yeah, we've got the likes of and stuff like that. That you know wants out the club after a season. It, yeah, but if it, that's the thing now is that you look at the rebuild that went on in the summer. The rebuild that he he went on and tried to do was completely changing the dynamic of how we play. I've said this multiple times. I never see that dynamic try and change. I see from the start of the season we tried to play the same, attacking the same way. With, yeah, with with newer players who weren't that type of player. But Moyes insists that he was trying this different style. Where Antonio come out and said we were trying. A different I'm not style. having it. I never saw this. No, I'm, style. I'm, I'm, I'm used you to. Know, I just, I just think they he didn't know how. They didn't know that. It's just like you said. Not they not. thought just personnel change. You know what I mean? That's all. That's all it takes. Personnel change, and there was no. Because what what experienced coaching staff did we have that that knew how, that had serious experience of playing that style of football? That we we brought in Mark Warburton. Yeah. You know, who's now gone. Yeah. Why don't we bring in anyone to then go and say, right, help us, you've worked at clubs and you've helped facilitate this style of football, help us coach this team to play that way. There wasn't. Yeah, yeah, no, you are right, mate, you are right. And, and that's, that could be part of it, that could be part of why, because, you know, it, you, 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 you built the side on counter-attacking football, football for the past two, three seasons, or whatever, two, two and a half seasons, weren't it? Mm. You know, you, you've done that, and then you're going to try and change the dynamic. Like I said, right, you've not brought in positive, progressive men coaches. Yeah. You know, you've gone for coaches who were there the season and a new coach who plays a similar sort of style. 
Yeah, that's 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 the thing. So I think the other shocking thing for me is the the Skameka Halea situation comparison. Yeah. comparison. You know, it took eighteen months to put in. Yep. And I, I, I just don't, I don't know. I'm, I've just got no faith in him, and that's yeah. that's horrible to say because he's just won us a trophy. And I've just but I've you know we need to see evolution. Yeah. And I, I I'm with Scott. I didn't see this new stuff. We were playing the same way. Week in, week out, there was no change of style. We just had better players. Mm. Players that could get us out of it. Yeah. That's my opinion. Yeah. There was never a change, never. But there was a point. So that that turning point, because what they what Antonio said was it was up until November, like World Cup time, where they persisted with it. Maybe into January, no, they persisted. No. They, that's what that. No. Sorry, they persisted with that. Um, and then they identified and goes, nah, right, okay, we're going to have to check. Because apparently Moyes wanted to keep them playing that way so they'd get used to it for the next season that they've got enough time getting used to the, this way of playing. And then when they went back, that's when we reverted to how we played before. That's how it changed. But so the narrative is there. But yeah, when you look at it, when we had when we played this possession-based football, we were still really in the minority when it comes to possession in games. Like you'd look at it. And that was the big thing. It was very rarely. We weren't at position size. No, the, <clears throat> that's what I'm saying. There's many a games where I've seen it being like 70 30. Yeah. Right? And we, it, but we've ended up winning them games somehow. Yeah. No, but it, it, it'd be interesting. Obviously, I can't remember offhand, but what was the possession? I know we had more possession than Forest when we played Forest. So that was probably the only game you could really sit there and yeah. say that. Like, as we've gone, said at the start, You're probably, that's the game we could have won. Yeah. Premier League wise, you probably count on one hand the amount definitely, of times we had more possession than, than you, teams. You know what? I think you obviously. You wouldn't even need all five fingers. We do, we're obviously going to do a season preview predictions when that comes, but I think how we should, you know, it has been a horrible season, but at the end of the day, we should remember it for, for what we got and what it gave us of that amazing well, let's, let's talk achievement about because this, uh, this trophy. I mean, it's, it's ridiculed by some, it's celebrated by others, it's adored by us. I think it's a fantastic achievement. Mate, it's a, it's a European trophy, it's a final. It might be the third tier of European football, but it don't matter. It's a final, it's a trophy, and we beat a good team. Fiorentina are a good team. They're, they're a famous team, you know? They, they've had great players play for them down the years. Um, I, I, listen, it was a night that I'll never forget. I'm still trying, it's been a week, over a week now, and I'm still trying to process it all. It's, um, yeah, it's a massive achievement for this football club. Yeah. It is, and that's the thing, like you said, pe pe look, people who turn their nose up here have been, uh, you know, have been sport with other competitions that they're competing in, and they forget, you know, certain fans forget where they've come from, that probably 20 years ago they would have bit their hand off to yeah. be Absolute stuff. plastic glory hunters and, is and, what and they that's, are. And, that's the thing. and then, and then the, the, the lesser teams, the, the Crystal Palace fans who come out and sneak... Crystal Palace, trophy, by the way, they've uh, never, ever won a major trophy. Exactly. You know, they, this is the thing. They, they turn their noses up at it and... Like, they, 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 they change up face with us in a heartbeat. Yeah, well, they would kill to be in our position. They, and, yeah, that's the thing. Let's I, fucking celebrate a cup of tea. <laughs> Honestly, mate, they, they, these clubs, like, even, even like, not all Tottenham <laughs> fans, because I've spoken to some, some of my mates who support Tottenham, and they, they was, they, they, they're, they're saying, like, I wish it was us. Like, yeah. but listen, Tottenham dined at the top table in the Champions League final once. They got a taste for it. They've never had it again. So it's hard for them to. They, they, they turn their nose down at this competition, but they haven't won yeah. a cup since 2008, and that was the League Cup. I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather be sitting here today saying that we've won a European trophy than, oh, we got to yeah. a final cup years ago. Well, I, 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 was, enough, I was looking at, you know, that you've got all these fans that are saying, like, you know, especially Tottenham fans. Let's be honest, we're specifically talking about Tottenham fans, mate, in, in, yeah, they were. in the majority, yeah. And they're, 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 you know, it's below us and all this sort of thing, right? And, like, it's the fucking Carabao Cup of Europe. Let me just go on to just say, right, I was looking for Manchester City's achievements, right? You've got the greatest manager, I think, in, that's ever existed in the Premier League, right? And it's a very close, close knit between him and Wenger. Uh, sorry. Fergie. Uh, but I believe Guardiola has surpassed Ferguson in, in, you know, the greatest manager ever, you know? Really? Different type. I do, yeah, I do. I do. Because he's done it so many times with so many clubs. Yeah. yeah. Two you know trebles. I mean? Two trebles. Done it with Barcelona, done it with Bayern Munich, done it with, Man you know, City. with, with Manchester City. Three leagues. But I, I, I believe he's surprised. But it's opinion, you know what I mean? Like, that is open. That is, an, that, yeah. that is my opinion, right? 
You've seen the amount of League Cups that he's won. Because he yeah, they won five in a row. Seriously. Exactly. Yeah, because every it's trophy's a trophy at the end of the day. Look at look how Mourinho took this Conference yes. League last year. That's what top managers do. They take the competition seriously. And like when like you say, you get teams like like the Spurs fans mainly that they're turning their nose up here. That they would give their right arm to have won a trophy. Yeah. They haven't won a trophy. They're always saying, "Oh, we're we we're, we're a big club. We need to win trophies. We've got this big shiny stadium." Got to start, right? Yeah. Like this, uh, I'm not saying, look, nothing's guaranteed in football, but how do, how do we know now that we might, in the next five years, maybe go and win another couple of trophies? You don't mm. know, do you? Well, Mate, you're, fuck you're, them. You're right, in, you're right in what you're saying, and that's the thing, you know, you're turning those up in a heartbeat, they'll trade places with us all day long. It's a, I think as well, when you look at the celebrations, the, um, you know, the way our fans celebrated it, the, the, the parade and all of this, you know, everything that went into it, it might, if there's a potential investor out there thinking like, and they're looking at these scenes for winning this cup, I go, God, imagine if you give them the Premier League trophy. How yeah. the fuck would they react to that? You know what I mean? Like, and, and things like that do sometimes. We are so ripe for a takeover. To, to, to it's not even a takeover, mate, it's players. Players, players yeah. might be sitting there thinking, I want to be a part of that. They're going to be in the Europa League next season. We can do this again. Yeah, now, yeah. potential signings might have thinking, nah, if they don't win it, they finish like 14th, like that. Nah, that's not for me. But when they see that and we won that trophy, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, and, and we're winning the trophies. They're, they're thinking, yeah, I want to be part of that squad. I want to be part, I want to play under David Moyes or whoever the manager's going to be. Absolutely. It's funny of things, as much as we look lovers at this stadium, look, other, other players from other countries look at this place. In fact, it's the London Stadium. In fact, it's the only, the only Olympic. Fact. You play in front of 62,000 people every week. It, it, and it's a big draw. Being in London is a big draw. Players want to be in the city. Second highest attendance in the Premier League last season. There you go. In the stadium, in a, in a shit Sell season. out every single away game. Yeah. It's hard to get tickets for away games but, these days. Right. Get your head around that. Second highest average attendance in the Premier League, and we finished. It's not right. We finished. What did we do? Four eight. Four eight. You know that, that's 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 the crazy thing yeah. about it. You've got teams that, man, you know, who was above us, Man City or Man United? All of them. No. In attendance. Attendance. Man United. United. They've got a bigger stadium. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. So you look at that. Yeah. So the team finished fourteenth. Had a higher mm. average attendance in the, the Premier League. The treble winners. Yo, I, I, I know stadium. it's. Uh, no, I know it's a bit tongue in cheek. We sing it about us being massive, but we are a big club. We I, I are. Think, a, we are a big club. I think you see the celebration, the amount of people that turn up, especially considering there was what 15,000 if not or more. More, that more than that, yeah. You know, so it, it goes to show that how big West Ham actually is. I think. I think things like that as well. I think surprise a few rival fans who sit there and go, "You're a fucking tin pot, nothing club." Mm -hmm. And and it does go to show, like, how can you? I remember when before we moved in, you're never going to fill that up. We talked about it. We are full every fucking week. It's full every week, yeah. without foul. Yeah. Fifty thousand odd season ticket mm. holders. Yeah, as well. you know what I mean. Like full every week. Yeah, what you've got? We've got about probably hundred thousand fans across the old country. Fucking two hundred thousand or like hundred fifty thousand or something. They reckon come and out for that parade. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. like it's. And winning, and the thing is as well, what you've got to remember is winning, winning the trophy, being on the stage where the whole of Europe's watching, you know, people around the world are watching, there are people around the world watching, but we see that by the growth that you're seeing of the American supporters groups. You know, you, you look at, through Twitter now, you've got uh, Indian supporters, you've got teams that are supporters in African countries watching West Ham now. You know, before, you look at the impact, they're probably watching the Man United's Liverpool's because that's the, you know, the dominant forces in history of, of English football. But now, they can't watch the West Ham. They're yeah. coming, they're paying hundreds of pounds to come and watch a game at the London Stadium. But that's, you know, it's going to grow. It's what you play football for, isn't it, Scott? You to play to win trophies. Like yep. every player that dreams to be a football player wants to win the FA Cup. As a, as a young English boy, yep. you dream of playing at Wembley and winning the FA Cup. Yep. You win winning the league. That's what you play for. You, but any time there's a chance to win a trophy, never turn your nose up because there's been many good players that mm. retired with nothing. Exactly, exactly. You know, you, you look at playing in the Champions League is it's the pinnacle of European football. You know, as a, as a club game, it's the pinnacle. But at the end of the day. Yeah, great. You can play in it. You play in a group stage, you get knocked out. What would you rather have? A trophy that when you retire, you sit there 
And do you know what? Yeah, I did play in the Champions League final, but I won this trophy. Yeah. That, that's, that's there how you I, go. That's what you, when you see, you can... Ask Harry Kane. Yeah. If Tottenham were in that Conference League final and they won it, and they've been in the Champions League final... Harry Kane come out and said it. Harry Kane come out and said it the other day. said it. Even when they first qualified for it, he said, we've got to take this competition serious and win it. So, yeah, look, and, and they make me laugh when they think, oh, look, teams that finish 14th. And like, we didn't finish 14th to get in there. We finished 7th. Yeah, exactly, know? yeah. Stupid. Leicester finished, and it was in a relegation battle and got to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Yeah. So, yeah. there you go. But great season, mate. Great season, all old, old, old. I enjoyed the, the end of it, the tail end of the season. Summarise. What has to change next season? Summary. Oh, quick. Summary. Just one the word. The manager's <laughs> attitude. What? Yeah, I'd have to say, if Moyes is still in charge, he has to change his attitude, the way he adapts to games and the way... Yeah. And we've got to get the signings right. No one called me negative, by the way. I tried to end on a positive. But next season, <laughs> um, what has to change is... Obviously, personnel, players that we're getting in, players out. And yeah, like Scott said, our approach to games. You know, if we're going to be um, in Europe, we have to believe in ourselves and, and actually plan, have a plan. If we are going to go all in on, on counter-attacking football, go all in, bring the right players to play that. If we're going to change it, go all in on that, but have a vision, have a plan and stick to it and make it work. If you can get the players that we bought in this season, playing like they did at the end of last season, I think we'll have a really good season. Mm. There we go. There we go. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, that was our summary of the season. Uh, let us know what you think in the comment section down below. If you're new around here, subscribe. One thing left to say. Come, come on, you guys.